quick guide to setting up your i12 plus or your i15 plus just so you can get to know the settings. When you first get the device you need to turn it on. The power button is on the left hand side along with the volume buttons. Once your computer is fired up uh, you can go into the gaze interaction settings. This is the red icon on the desktop of your screen. Once in here I'll just quickly show you around. Calibration is about setting it up in the right position for the user and teaching the eye tracking software to uh, read the user's eyes. The first thing you need to do is set the position. You can do this by going to the track status icon here or you could also press the top button on the left hand side of the device and this will also bring up the box. You can see at the moment my eyes are quite high in the box and I'm too close to the screen and I know that by the arrow uh, being in the red section at the top bar there. What I need to do is reposition either the device or myself so that the eyes are in the middle of the box and the arrow is in the green section of the coloured bar. You may need to tilt the screen uh, if the user's on a tilt, so this is your first step. Once you're in a good position, you're going to press close. If you've got a new user, you might just do that position to start with, play some games in Look to Learn or Sensory Eye Effects. But if you want the system to be more accurate, then you'll need to go through the calibration process. You've got some settings here for the calibration, so we'll click there. You can change the background colour, you can change the number of points that uh, they have to look at during the calibration, so you might like to start with two. You can change what they're looking at, so at the moment it's a dot, but you might like to choose an image or a video, something a favourite of the person. You can change the colour and the speed in which the dots move around. The keyboard step through can be really handy for people who you might want to have control of the speed of the calibration, so as you click your keyboard um, and toggle through the calibration, you can kind of check that the user is attending to the calibration process. So good to explore some of those settings. Once you're ready, you hit calibrate. Ensure the user is in a good position and they need to watch the dots. Once you've completed the calibration, you'll see the result. You can set up maybe the person's one eye is better than another. You might like to tell the software just to track only their left eye or only their right eye. Once you've done this, just down the side here, interaction, this is how you can change dwell times and things. You can have different user profiles if you've got multiple users using the system but I'll just get into Windows Control. This is where you can tell the system to launch the eye gaze automatically when you turn on the computer. You might like to have that ticked. If you're using Look to Learn, Sensory Eye Effects or other software, I'd suggest selecting mouse emulation because then you won't have a toolbar down the side. And you may also like to hide this menu uh, because your users don't need the mouse control initially um, and especially not in Look to Learn. So they might be two things you like to set. In system settings, you can set an off-screen menu. So when you look at a particular position, maybe it's the bottom, top, left, right, then you'll bring up a pause for the eye tracker. This can be really handy for some users, but for others you might find that uh, they don't need it, so you could set that position to none. When you change settings, just make sure you click it. Down the side here you have some system information about what version you're running. So that's a quick guide to the gaze interaction settings. Once you're ready to go, click OK and get into the software that you're using. It might be Look to Learn, Sensory IFA.